Welcome back to episode one of season three of the Run Gear. And we're back and we have brought along Emmett with us here to explain a few more details because this season is going to be our toughest jet. As tough as we've made on ourselves so far, we're now taking on a half marathon for me and a marathon for Paddy. So we need all the help we can get. Yeah, who would have thought, I suppose, coming back you know, back in January when we started off wheezing our way around, uh, that we'd, we'd end up doing uh, doing half marathons and full marathons. And, and, and Emmett certainly has been uh, very helpful for me over the last few weeks in terms of training. So we asked him to come back and really talk to us about, um, you know, at this stage in September, with a couple of months out from from the marathon and, and you know close enough for your half marathon yeah, that's the what are you know two or three things that people really need to focus on yep so I guess we just uh, September you're talking about two months out from from the Dublin City Marathon or most people will run marathons this time of the year in sort of September October so you're coming into prime marathon season here first and foremost and this is not just for marathons but for every event is the importance of consistency okay log in your weekly training week in week out not missing chunks of, of, of time for any particular reason uh, and it's not just a case of being consistent with your training but in particular with your nutrition and most of all sleep because when you're doing your hard training you're doing long runs this time of the year it's really important that you get enough sleep and in between sleep is the best performance enhancing tool available to runners that's legal and, <laughs> and therefore it should be a priority as much as the training I mean obviously consistency was one of the things that, that I've you know not struggled with but you know there can be days where you know work gets in the way and and you know the weekend can get in the way but even if it's you know logging those miles is so important that's what I found and and uh, but there was one question I had you know what was curious for me was say you might do a race and then the next day you'll have me running and you kind of it kind of goes against logic what's the purpose of those those run, those recovery runs yeah so the um, the best way to recover from a hard effort is actually active recovery rather than just static recovery so rather than taking complete rest what you want to do is get out the next day after either a hard workout or a yeah. race just do some very easy gentle miles preferably on the grass uh, and what it does is just gets blood flowing to the muscles and just gets that recovery process kick started and that uh, recovery process will be sped up by the fact you're doing active recovery instead of passive recovery. So we're assuming at this stage that people have a certain level of training before taking a half marathon. You know, Bob's, Bob's mileage has got in increased, mine's increased significantly. So firstly for Bob, you know, the half marathon coming up in September, late September, you know, what should be the focus now for him? So for Bob, I mean, I guess if you've got that consistent training under your belt, what you're looking at in these last couple of weeks is getting a little bit more specific. And what you want to do is try and pinpoint the time that you're going to run for the half marathon. So let's say it's around about two hours, which is about 8.30 per mile pace. Yeah. What you want to be doing is on your days where you're doing a little bit of a harder workout, that you're running exactly at 8.30 per mile pace. So rather than trying to do sessions that are too fast, which are good for the head, to be, it, it's nice. Let, let's say you're doing mile repeats. If you're doing those mile repeats in seven minutes or seven thirty. It gives you a little bit of a confidence boost to say I can run that fast. But that pace is not sustainable on race day. So what you're much better off is doing a few long, or do, a few more mile repeats, but doing it specifically at the pace that you're trying to run. And so hitting distance, that 8.30 pace. The distance that should be covering over that time. I mean, like I could run a 5k at that pace, or I could run a, a 10k at that pace. Which one should I be going after? I shouldn't be running a half marathon every time I go to drain, obviously. No. So I mean, let's say you're training four times a week. One day a week should be a long, easy run. That's literally just about time on your feet uh, and just covering the distance. If you're getting ready for a half marathon, that run probably needs to get up between 10, 12, maybe even up to 14 miles. Um, two days are just easy days, so just recovery runs at at a conversational pace where your breathing is not labored, but it's just nice and easy, preferably again on the grass because it speeds up the recovery process. And then that one other day, the fourth day of the week, that's where you do something a little bit more specific and, and that's where you would, for somebody who's looking to run, say, a two hour half marathon, that they're looking to run specifically at a 30 per mile pace. If you've got somebody who's running, let's say, a 10 mile race in 70 minutes, they're obviously looking to run um, a little bit of those workout days. Exactly seven minutes per minute. And, and so in the, it's being specific on those days. And in the case of Bob and in the case of myself, in training, how far does the mileage go up? So if someone is running a half marathon, should they run? You know, should their longest run eventually be more than a half marathon, less? Or, or say for the marathon, do you need to run 26 miles in training, or, yep. or do, is it less than that? It varies by individual, uh, but I would say if you're getting ready for a marathon, my opinion, 
the, the longest you really need to go is sort of 20 to 22 miles. Going beyond that, while there's there's a certain benefit, I think psychologically, that you know you can cover the distance, it takes quite a, quite, quite a while to recover from those okay. sort of really, really long ones. So I think for most people, getting to 20, 22 miles and just doing that on one or two occasions is more than enough. For somebody getting ready for a half marathon, I'd like them to get up to sort of between 12, 14, maybe 15 miles. Um, but again, it all depends on where you're coming from that you're, you're not building up your mileage too quickly and you're not increasing the distance of those long runs too fast. Otherwise that's going to trigger off injury. And in terms then of, uh, of how you eat over, over that period as well, I mean, you know, we, we know we have to eat clean and eat healthy, but is there, you know, are there timing issues as well? Should you not eat a massive feed the night before or beforehand? Especially in the long runs. Yeah, particularly for long runs, I suppose it's important to get a high... In general, your, carb, your diet has got to be high in carbohydrates. Yeah. You're burning a lot of energy, so you, and carbohydrates are the best fuel for distance runners. Um, so the night before, any long run or a race, make sure there's a high carb content meal, which is important. But during your training period, what you want to do is to get carbohydrate and protein on board very soon after you finish the run. Okay. So within, ideally within 20 minutes, that you're getting some sort of protein shake, uh, maybe chocolate milk and a banana, so a small bit of protein, a small bit of carb, and then within 90 minutes that you're getting a full meal. Uh, and that's got all your, your, your meat, veg, protein, carbohydrate, all of those things are catered for within 90 minutes. If that carbohydrate is not replaced in a short window after uh, either the, the training session or the race, uh, it stifles the recovery process. Uh, and so at this stage, so we've talked about consistency, so we've talked about you know how to eat right. Is there anything else that people should really focus on now in a few weeks and weeks? Uh, I guess going back to the idea of consistency, one thing that I always tell people this time of the year is always finish your training session with one goal and that is that you're able to come back and train again the next day. Mm. So you're not trying to blow the lights out in any particular given session, but that it's consistent and controlled over a long period of time. So that in two or three days time when you come back and you've got to train again, you're able to train and you're able to train in the way that your training plan dictates. So um, finally, if people want to get in touch with you, if people want to uh, you know, avail of yours, you do online coaching, you do coaching. Yep. Um, so it's perfectpacing.com and if they want to email perfectpacing.com exactly um, perfectpacing uh, info at gmail.com is the email address or you can contact us through Facebook or Twitter okay. so um, so that's all for I think episode one um, the, the next few weeks are going to be interesting I hope you join us um, we're going to talk to sports psychologists we're going to talk to nutrition experts and more importantly we're going to run a lot so, um, so not more mileage, not more mileage. until next time uh, from myself Bob and Emmett uh, thank you very much Take thank you that's camera one. Feeling good. Just supinator land on the outside. I know you said it was your left knee that can give you a bit of yeah. problem. You just buy in We only came here to get the gate analysis. It's like people. I see the female really good.